Hey guys, so today we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to be continuing on with photography, but we're going to be taking a little uh, break from uh, actually uh, taking the pictures and we're going to learn a little bit about how we can um, very simply touch the photos up. Um, so let's go to your Dropbox that you're, you're in right now and you'll want to make sure that you download the folder, the, fo the, the pictures that we see here. We have um, two pictures from last year's basketball season and we've got two pictures of the baseball um, pictures here. So the, the first basketball picture, you can see from the size here that um, uh, some of these were taken pictures at like, you know, different qualities. For instance, these two were probably taken at, uh, you know, uh, just normal quality, maybe medium pictures. And then this one right here was probably taken as a small. Uh, and this one right here was taken as a large. So if I were to like, you know, open this one up here and um, take a look at the, the information, so let's say okay, file info. You can see this one is um, we can see all the information here on your on your pictures. So for instance, this one was taken. Um, this is a you know three thousand pixels across and about two thousand pixels tall. And you can see the um, the different things. I had my um, uh, I had uh, my ISO up really high. I had uh, this uh, set to you know one and twelve hundredths of a second. And my f-stop was as wide as it could go, zoomed in as it was. And this right here is the um, the, the focal length right here. So, um, so this was me taken with the, one of those uh, long lenses that we have there. Um, so I'll just close this. Uh, this right here, basketball two. We can take a look at this. this is take a little few more seconds. In fact, I'll just go ahead and download the other ones while I'm waiting on this to load. Um, we can see that it's uh, about ten times the size of the first one. So we can see what's going on with this basketball two. And once again, we right click on it. We say file info. And we can see this one is about twice the size. It's about 6,000 pixels across and 4,000 pixels tall. And um, this one I had the ISO about as high as it could go. The, the gym, gymnasiums seem like they're well lit, but when you're trying to take a picture in 1,000th of a second, um, it's not quite, it, it, you, you, have to, you have to bring the ISO up a whole lot, right? And so once again, I was zoomed in um, all like as far as I could with the, with the um, lowest uh, ISO F stuff I could get just to let as much light in as possible. Um, and then we can take a look at these right here, um, softball one. Um, so we can just once again right click on it, file info, and um, you can see this was taken with one four thousandth of a second. And uh, because it was so bright outside, I could keep the ISO a little lower, and um, my f stop was a little bit higher. I think I was, I was just um, trying to eliminate the light as much as possible because it was just so bright. Um, and so you can see this is this is just many a split second before the bat hit the ball and, and knocked it out of the park, or uh, you know, or, or she got she got her hit. So this is a, a really neat moment. So you can you can do a lot of really cool stuff, especially if you have it set on bursts, which is what I had it on. Where you just hold the shutter down, and it'll take ten ten pictures within just moments, within just a, a couple of seconds. And then finally, the baseball one here is um, the moment right before, right after the pitcher lets fly. Um, so this is another uh, nice moment you can catch. It's probably once again, probably one, one four thousandth of a second. Let's take a look here. Yeah. So this is one of those things. Sometimes you can take a look at pictures and you can think to yourself, like, what was the, what were the settings right here? And so if it's bright, you know, bright outside, you can generally guess that your your ISO is going to be a good deal lower uh, than if it were out, if it were inside, especially if it's in a gym where people are moving fast and the lights are way up high and you have a lot of sort of like, you know, uh, diffusion of the light before it hits the floor. Um, all right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here to this website, Pixel Editor, and you see I already have this up, so I'll just go ahead and close this out just so we can kind of see what we're doing. Um, so you download those images. You, you download them someplace that you can find them. So I don't know if um, those of us who are new um, will need to either insert an SD card, or I think what you can most likely do is you can um, just right-click on it, and you can say Copy Link Address, and I want to see you can probably open image from URL. So let me just Control-V here and try that. Oh, it didn't work. Okay, well, so you probably want to download that to an SD card uh, if you can't download it right to your computer. So find an SD card and put it into your computer and download it that way. And we can just open this image from the computer. And um, I'm going to find that, that one that I, found, I just downloaded here. So I'll just find softball. We'll start off with softball here. Now, um, you can use Photoshop uh, and this sort of editor here. In fact, you can even use the um, the... The, uh, the the picture tool that you you have before, for instance, if I were just you know just to kind of click back on here, I'll just click back on here one more time, and I'll just open this up. Uh, if you open up your picture uh, uh, window and just click on it, you can click on this little edit button here. Oops, back this out. You can edit. Wow. 
and uh, by clicking on edit you can um, you can add a couple filters on it if you want and obviously these are um, uh, you know popular filters that you can add but um, you can also um, just uh, undo all here you can also adjust it and you can adjust the light so for instance if it's overexposed you can bring the light down um, to make it a little less exposed and if it's if it's you know too dark you can bring the light up and stuff you can also um, sort of oversaturate the colors if you want and again this this you desaturate them turn black and white uh, this right here is a, and then you can also add a, a, a vignette which is sort of like little you know um, shadows around the corners and we'll, we'll do that we'll see how we how we achieve that um, as far as clarity goes this just um, you can kind of see what's happening here it's sort of adding a sort of a blur on top of it as opposed to sharpening things um, and so th these are all options you can do just for just for real quick um, fixes especially if, if you if the picture is underexposed uh, the uh, brightening works a lot uh, works nice but, but we can kind of see a little little more exact in how this works here so I'm going to go once again back to the photo editor and um, go ahead and open up the softball picture here and we're going to do three things to, um, to to see if we can't touch this up now I, I like this picture I think I think it's well exposed there's a couple of uh, overexposed spots right here on her knee and on her arm um, but uh, overall I think it's I think it's pretty well exposed but um, if we want to uh, make it a little bit darker just to bring the light down a bit um, we're going to go over here to adjustment and we're going to click on levels um, so levels is a very cool tool that um, uh, adjusts the shadows the midtones and the highlights so if I were to bring the highlights towards the center you'll notice the midtones also move slightly this brightens everything up now this picture does not need to be any brighter so I definitely don't want to do that I'm going to bring that back up to the edge here so 255 is the max you can do it um, and then I'm going to go over here to the shadows and I'll pull the shadows towards the middle and you can see the shadows uh, begin to darken the darker spots here um, if I if I keep bringing this up eventually it's going to um, create a very um, I would say um, uh, bring a lot of attention for one thing it's gonna get, get too dark but you're also going to have a lot of attention so these little um, sort of uh, white hot spots the, the, the idea about um, overexposure isn't so much that you know it's it's there's no color that there's, there's no color information so it doesn't realize that it's anything other than just a blank white so trying to change the hue trying to change the color is basically just trying to change nothing nothing's there in far, as far as information goes so I'm gonna pull this up to say 30 and if you wanna if you wanna if you want to pull it up to like maybe 25 35 something like that I think it's about the safe zone there and if we were just to um, hit control Z and see the difference here. Control Z is undo. If you don't, if that doesn't work, you can press Edit and undo. Um, uh, and then the Control Y. We can kind of see the difference. I think this does a little bit for. I think this this um, it helps enhance the colors. It makes the 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 greens a little richer. Makes the blues a little richer. Um, kind of, uh, you know, obviously it enhances the shadows. It makes everything a little bit deeper. Um, and that's that's uh, that's a good thing. Now another thing you can do um, is go to Image or other Adjustment and click on. Hue, uh, brightness and contrast. Now, brightness is simply adding a layer of white to the, the uh, like on top of your picture, and then pulling it down as a layer of black to your picture. Um, so we want to do that. So I'll just click that back, and I'll just change that back to zero. And um, what I'll do once it, oh, I'm meaning to press enter here. Once again, adjustment, uh, brightness, contrast. Contrast just simply makes a difference between the light and the dark spots. So if I pull the contrast up. Uh, you can start to see a little difference here when it comes to uh, the darkness, uh, the dark spots, and the, and the light spots begin to kind of uh, become sharper in, in their distinction. Now, too much contrast makes it look, you know, it's all bled out and stuff, um, and too little contrast turns it all gray. So I'm just going to go over here to maybe about 15 or so. That's about good. And um, so once again, if we wanted just to over here in our history, just click on Open Image. We can see the, the difference between what, what this made. So uh, we can also just go to brightness and contrast here and uh, kind of see what, what the difference was here between the levels and the brightness. Again, I think it just makes the colors pop a little bit. So this is this is a good start um, as far as making your pictures look a little bolder. Um, if if and, and again, a lot of this is just sort of subjective. So if you have a picture that you find that you're not satisfied, if you think it gets a little washed out, a little desaturated, um, meaning that the colors aren't as bright as you like, you can you can um, bring you can bring those up. Now, um, the last thing we'll do is we're going to add a sort of gradient on top of it. Now, gradients are used a lot in these filters uh, that uh, tend to um, make things uh, uh, kind of uh, cool the picture down or warm the picture up. So, um, if I were just to 
um, add a layer here, which you, if if you can sort of think about layers as transparent pieces of paper on top of another, I'm going to click on this this button over here that says New Layer. And if you don't see that, if uh, if if you can't find that, you can go over here to where it says Layer, New Layer, and um, if you want, if you just like kind of a, a you just click the little paint bucket tool and just click anywhere. For instance, I'll just change, I'll click on this little black rectangle here and I'll change this to say like a dark blue. And the way we choose colors is we, we go around the color wheel and this is your just normal color wheel. So, you know, red, you know, is on the opposite side of green and purple is on the opposite side of yellow. And so these, these are kind of reflecting to the different, uh, different primary colors, you know, red, blue, yellow. And uh, what you want to, you know, what you'll do is you'll just choose like a color like say red and just pull it over to red press OK and you can um, you can just click anywhere and this this uh, obviously turns the whole image red but um, you can just click this little check mark here it'll go away and you can pull down this opacity all the way to about like maybe 10 right and um, it's the 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 red's still there but it's down to a point where it's it's you know more felt than seen this is what we talk about when we talk about um, uh, the the uh, the temperature of it so uh, everything looks a little bit warmer so if I were to undo this then <clears throat> you can see it, it kind of goes away I click on the red again I'm gonna choose blue this time and I'll just uh, click over here and I'll, I'll just click the bucket and once again now it looks a little cooler um, but uh, oftentimes what's, uh, what's striking what's visually striking is this uh, ability to use this gradient tool I click on the little gradient tool here um, and what I can do is I can choose a gradient. Now your gradient is probably going to start off looking like this black and white. Um, to change this from black and white, um, you click this little color stops here, what we call this. So I'll click on this color stop and it says the color is black. So I'm going to click on the black and I'm going to find just two colors that are on opposite sides of this little color wheel. So for like one, I'll just choose this sort of bluish green here and I'll just bring it over here. I'll press OK. And then I'm going to click on this color stop, the white color stop, and I'm just going to click the little white rectangle there, and I'm going to choose this sort of orange. It's sort of opposite the um, the blue here, a little more towards the yellow side. We have a lighter orange. I can even pull it this way, um, and just press OK. And so now we have this uh, fun little teal and orange um, gradient here, which is used a lot in Hollywood posters. So um, uh, you, you can um, you can kind of look that up, teal and orange in Hollywood posters, and just click anywhere outside of that little box. And you can what we'll do now. Is uh, I'll pull the um, the gradient all the way up to 100, uh, opacity all the way to 100, and I'm just going to stretch this gradient across like so, and we see on one side we have blue, and on the other side we have orange. Now, if you wanted to just go straight across, and you could just do this over and over again, you can just you know whatever direction you wanted to go. In fact, I'm 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 going to I'm just going to uh, stick this the the, the way that the first time. Well, have the orange on top, and um, and once again we'll pull this down to about maybe 15 or so, maybe 20, yeah, 16, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Again, you want it to where the colors are more uh, felt than seen. So I'm going to go ahead and change it back to 15 here. That's about right. Okay, I'll press enter. Um, okay, so this is this is a simple, this is a simple um, uh, uh, tool here, putting a gradient on top of your picture uh, to um, uh, to kind of cast a bit of a, a, a mood to it. So if I look at the original picture here, right, here's the original picture, which again, you know, it, it, fine. Um, but the after all, all we did, we've given it just a bit of a, a, a new sort of boldness and a new sort of a, a, like kind of a, a mood to it. Um, so I'm going to click over here on the A, and I'm going to um, click anywhere just on here. I'm just going to click once, and I'm going to write my last name here, Lobello. And I'm going to change the color to white. And I'm going to change, I'll just pull this up here a little bit. I'm going to change the size to uh, maybe like, uh, maybe like 100. And you can just choose whatever font you want. I'll choose um, copper plate. No, Cooper. I'll choose Cooper. So you choose whatever font you want and press OK. You don't want this to be very huge. And I'm going to click this little move tool here and I'm going to move this over to the corner just so it's out of the way. So this will be your little your little copyright watermark there just so everyone knows that you made it. Okay so for this one what we'll do uh, once now that we're done we'll press file and we'll press save and um, what we'll do is we'll give it a second to you know uh, work out you know have the, the run through the maze here and I'm going to press softball I'm going to press a space and I'm going to say edited 
and I'll put my last name. And you'll submit that to the DTOL Dropbox. And press save. I'll press yes. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and close this and I'll press no to save the image because if I save the image, basically what happens is you, um, uh, you know, it'll it'll ask you to save it as like a, a, a pixlr edited file that you can open up that'll save all your information you continue editing it but uh, i won't do that for now so i'll just uh, close this out and i'll press no and um go ahead and open and i'm going to find the baseball picture baseball so i'll find baseball let's open all right. Um, so here, what we'll do is we'll um, uh, there's a there's a different way we can adjust the colors uh, of this uh, of these pictures here. Um, if we wanted to do what we did before with the uh, levels to make the uh, shadows a little bit bolder versus the um, and, and the contrast to make everything a, a little bit, we can do that with one tool. We can do all those things with one tool, and I think this tool's a, a nice to use by itself and also in, in conjunction with those is the curves. The curves is essentially this, the same thing. We're, we're, we're working both with the saturation of the colors and also the um, uh, presence of, of, of shadows and, and light and stuff. So we have this little histogram here. If I click on this little histogram, again, we're, we're seeing like, you know, the, the kind of frequency of different hues here. Uh, so this right here has a lot of hues this way. So um, the, the classic curve uh, resembles an S. So where we have this little grid, if we move forward once and up once, uh, I can just click this little point here. I'll just pull this down a little bit here. And this seems to be kind of scrubbing a little bit, so I'll just pull this down. You can see the histogram moving a little bit to so where all the shadows are getting a little more intense. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to kind of follow this line to here. I'm going to pull, I'm going to go down to where this line meets the curve. And I'm just going to click here, make a new point. I'm just going to pull this up. So like so. And so already, and if you, if you didn't quite notice that because the change was kind of gradual, press OK, you can go back and forth to see what you changed here. So again, I like this because this right here, again, fine, but the colors are a little, I would say, a little washed out, a little pale because it was so bright outside. Um, and uh, but, but the curves make everything a little more intense, make, make all the colors a little more intense. Uh, so uh, you uh, obviously can do what it is that you you know, would like to do in terms of how intense you want the colors, but I would say th those little um, those little motions I made were just about enough uh, to, uh, to 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 get the uh, achievement that you wanted. Um, now, as far as the um, uh, selecting things go, um, if I wanted to say, for instance, uh, maybe blur out everything but uh, maybe yeah, his um, his face and his arms. Um, I could take this little this little lasso tool here, and I could just kind of select around, say maybe here, and uh, like this, and I can just sort of like bring some more attention to this little area here by going over to Filter and going to Gaussian Blur, and I can just kind of pull this up a little bit here. Actually, before I do that, I'm going to go over here to. Okay, never mind. Once again, Filter Gaussian Blur. And I, I can sort of blur this out a little bit here. Now, the thing about Gaussian blurs is that it's a little bit different than a camera blur. Um, but if I click outside of it, you can see that it blurs everything out there. Unfortunately, it also does some, you know, color um, uh, difference. So I'll just, I'll just undo that and I'll just control D. Um, but, but what I will do for this is, um, this is, this is nice. Let me undo the Gaussian blur again here. There we go. All right. And um, what I will do for this, though, is I will crop it. So if I go over here to this tool right here, this, this crop tool, um, I'm going to crop this to where he's going to take up most of the frame. And in fact, I'm going to see if I can't get it down to where it's you can't even see the woods behind him. So I'll just have this, and I'm going to I'm going to give a little bit of a uh, little bit of room uh, behind his arm and a little bit of space above the ball, but everything else is going to be out. So I'll make this little selection here. And um, what's great about this is it kind of follows the rule of thirds. You can see his face uh, kind of hits around that two thirds mark there, and uh, his arm hits around that 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 mark over there as well. The uh, the ball's off the corner, but that's okay. So I'll press enter, and uh, we we get this. So I'll I'll um I'll kind of zoom in a little bit here. So this is this is good again. A lot of action uh, with this, with uh, focusing in on on uh, him throwing the ball, and we don't have that sort of uh, distracting bit of the tree with, with the trees in the background. So that's that's a good one as well. So I'll go ahead and press file, and I'll press save. And I will 
this is a smaller picture, um, but that's I'll, I'll say once again baseball edited Lobello. And I'll press OK, and you can submit that to D2L as well. So save, close this out. No. Uh, and then we get two more here, and we'll do some we'll do some quick uh, fixes to these as well. And then um, what we'll do is we'll have a we'll have another Dropbox where you'll uh, basically do your your own. So I'll see if I can't uh, find. We had basketball, so I'll find basketball one and basketball two. So I'll find basketball one here. Press open. I believe this was the this is the kind of a bigger one here, about 3,000 pixels across. Right. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to crop this down to where we can just see our, you know, our uh, Griffin's basketball player here. We can just just sort of see her. And uh, once we have the crop uh, sort of tools available, uh, we can kind of position this to where maybe her eyes are about two thirds of the way up. That little line crosses over there, and um, maybe we could have. Let's look here. If I can make this a little bit bigger. Well, smaller. I think a little bit smaller. Um, it's not right. So maybe she, maybe her face just about hits that two thirds mark, uh, and her eyes are right, right up two thirds over there. So I'll just press enter. And um, what we'll do here is we're going to do a couple. Of, we're going to actually desaturate this. Desaturating means we're going to take away all the colors um, to where it's nothing but black and white. Uh, and so if I go over here to adjustment. I just click desaturate, bam, it goes black and white. Now you can obviously do the same effect by going over here to adjustment, um, hue and saturation, and you can see if you pull the saturation down, it washes the colors out. You can make the colors more bold. In this case, the, there's a lot of red, um, but if I just pull it all the way down, I can um, I can press, I can I can get get the same effect, right? So whichever way, just uh, adjustment, desaturate, or adjustment saturation. Now when you have black and white photos, um, when you do the um, the brightness and contrast, if I were to say for for instance, uh, bring the contrast up. Instead of it um, having the effect of washing all the colors out, it, what it does is it makes all the um, the whites uh, more and more white, and all the blacks more and more black. So all I'll do is I'll just I'll just bring it down to maybe like 47, 45. We'll call it 45. That's fine. And um, and this gives it sort of a uh, an effect where um, it looks uh, looks kind of like an older photo. Uh, where the uh, you know where you had a harder time controlling you, the exposure light. Um, all right, so what I'll do is I'll add a new window, and we can just sort of uh, see how the the vignettes are formed. Now, vignettes can be done two ways. Um, I would say an inexact way is to grab your brush tool. I'll just change my color to black, and I'll I'll make my brush. If you go up here to your brush. If you look right here, you can see this paints a, like a kind of a small you know line here. I'll go up to my brush. And I'll change my brush size to maybe 200, and we'll see how big that is. Maybe I'll go over here to diameter. I'll make it like 400 here, and um, we can see that. Okay, uh, I'll do that. Control Z, and uh, make sure you uh, have this layer clicked. If you click on the background and you color it, then you know you're gonna have a hard time getting rid of it because you can't erase it. But again, like I said, the the um, um, way we can do this is we can take our up here next to our brush, take the opacity of the brush itself, and bring it down to about maybe 25 or so. Um, so when we color, we get this little gray kind of block like this, and um, I can then sort of add on to it on the corners until I can make the corners totally black, and um, it kind of creates this little shadowy effect. And so I'll do the same thing to all the different corners. Now again, this is inexact because it's hard to get them all the same. But you know, if you wanted to add this and you wanted to like maybe make one corner darker, you could. Um, uh, so I'll just kind of kind of run through this. So you can kind of see what this looks like. And again, this is uh, one way of making a vignette, sort of like bringing attention and framing it in such a way to where um, you can see you, you, the eye is drawn more towards what's in the center. Um, if you wanted to maybe like color this this side a bit more with the vignette, just to bring more attention to what's going on, you know, kind of obscuring the, oppo the, the opposing player. So let's see about this. I'll just pull this over here. That's that's nice. Um, and uh, for some reason, Pixlr has this little um, uh, noise that's happening on the side here, and I mean that's that's okay. It just happens sometimes. Um, so I'll, I'll go ahead and just uh, uh, delete this. I just press delete on my keyboard. This just deletes all the information for that vignette I did. The other way, and the more, I would say, um, uh, exact way of doing this is just to go back to your gradients. If I click on my gradient, I'm, I'm left with that blue and green that I had before. Um, I can click on maybe this uh, this one right here where it has the um, the uh, 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 little checkered, little um, 
black checkers, uh, black on the corner and the gray and white checkers on the side. Um, the gray and white checkers on the side just means it's transparent. And um, if you uh, go over here and you switch the gradient to radial, it'll form a little circle here. Now watch what happens when I do this. I'm going to start in the center. I'm going to move over to the corner here. Um, what we have is a black uh, sort of splotch in the center and then um, it goes transparent on the sides. We want the opposite of that. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on here and we're just going to switch these places. So I'm just going to grab this one stop and drag it to the center. And I'm going to have this black stop here. I'll drag it to the, all the way to the right. And I'll drag the, cent the, all, the right, all the way to the left. So we'll try it again. Start in the center or as close to the center as you can make it and drag it all the way to the corner. And you can see it forms a little, little corners there. Now, this kind of obscures uh, our basketball player. So I can do this. I can start in the corner. I can go all the way past the corner and it'll give um, more of like an edge there. Uh, I can even go uh, not quite to the corner and I'll make it even darker. So what I'll do is I'll just go over here and I'll just go straight to the corner. Maybe a good deal past. So that, that's good. So it kind of shadows the edges. So that's, that's, a, that's a more exact way of doing it. Um, okay, so I'll just go ahead and save this file. Save and I'll just call this basketball one. Edited, low bellow. I'll press OK. Save it. And then I'll close this out. No. And I'll open my image. I'll open my last basketball image. Two. Now this one was the very large one, so it's very possible this will take a second to, to pop up here. Well, turned up. Um, okay, so this one's really neat because uh, our basketball player, our, our Griffin's basketball player, is actually um, hanging out here on this white wall. So when you have um, characters uh, or your figure on a white wall, that's a good use of negative space. So I'm going to crop this down just to him. I'm going to pull everything else out. I'm going to get rid of everything. I'm just going to crop. I'm going to actually make this more of a vertical thing. I'm going to get as much information as, as I can, um, maybe even um, right about to here, to the edge. And I might make this a little bit shorter just to keep it, uh, the proportions about the same as they were before. Sort of flip that outside. Press enter. And we're left this. I'll zoom in a good deal. Uh, what I'll do is I'll press Z on my keyboard and I'll zoom in. Um, so the first thing we'll do is we will desaturate this. So I'm just going to adjustment, desaturate. And then what I'll do is I'll once again go to uh, color balance and I'll. I'll uh, open my color balance. What I'll do is I'll go to adjustments, right as contrast, and I'll bring the contrast up, and hopefully this will turn the wall a good deal paler. And so right here, and then what I'll do is this: um, I'll go to adjustments and find where it says threshold. Now watch what happens when it says threshold. Um, threshold essentially uh, turns anything that's like on, th they have what's called basically a threshold. They have a certain point where the darkness becomes either white or black, one or the other, not, there's no in between. So if you, you pull the threshold up, you get more detail. Um, and if you pull the threshold down, you get less. Now at some point, it just turns into just a, a mess and you get like a silhouette. But there's a there's this little sweet spot here where you get enough information um, to you know, figure out what's what's happening here. And so I can see the griffins, I can see the basketball, I can see all this stuff, and I'll press OK for here. And this is a great uh, little um, uh, uh, a little little trick to kind of give your uh, give your pictures uh, some uh, it's just a, a neat little look here, and this can be used in conjunction with maybe some typography uh, or other things. Speaking of which, I didn't I didn't add my my watermark to my other things, so I'll just put back in Lobello here, so I can and I'll make this look a good deal smaller, make it down to like maybe. 55, probably good. And I'll put that in the corner just so we know that I'm the one who did this. So make sure that you have, well, you know, obviously at this point it's too late. If you didn't add a watermark, that's fine. But uh, in the future, we want to make sure that we put our, our names on our on our work here. Um, okay, so uh, what we'll do now, uh, we'll save this and we'll adjust, we'll, we'll put, let's change the name to edited and we'll call it, you know, last name. Press OK. And we will um, uh, uh, submit those four images to the Dropbox that says uh, basic photo editing. And then if you get done with all four of these, uh, you'll move on and you'll choose four of your own pictures and you'll basically do what we just did. You'll have a 
uh, one that you'll want to add a gradient to, one that you'll want to crop down and just do the curves to, one that you'll want to uh, desaturate at a vignette, and then one where you'll do this, uh, where you'll see if you can't find a spot that's that's a sort of a negative or sort of a, has a lot of negative space, and just do the threshold to where you can see kind of like the bare bits. So here, this, this, a lot of this is not connected, uh, but but our, our brain sort of completes it uh, to uh, to to see to see the, the full image. That's a that's a part of human psychology is to group things together. All right, well, I cannot wait to see what you guys produce, and happy editing.